So part of this facility is the sporting facility and the US and Canada use it for the moment as well. I'm just doing hill runs. I'm just getting ready for practice since I know they're going to call me up. Oliver, we need someone who's absolutely terrible. Come join us. I'll be like, all right, okay, I've done my warm ups, I'm good. Here we are, look at this facility. It's really cool. There's an event in June that I'll be going to where I get, to, where I spend the weekend as a professional player. Now, I can't tell in my head if I'm like, that's kind of weird, like I'm a washed up player. Why would I pretend like I'm gonna make it? Quite a cool entrance. But I'm still very curious to see what happens on a game day weekend. Any questions for me? <laughs> It's funny how in an event like this, I would always need a script in my mind, something that I would be doing throughout the day. My general idea for shooting here is, what does training look like for a professional soccer athlete? I have no idea. It's something that I don't think I would push myself to go to, just I'm not, I don't know if I'm that interested, but I think it's unique to each team that plays. I think that would be a unique experience, so I guess. <laughs> so we're gonna try that out here. and. The event today is meant to be for season ticket members as opposed to the general public. So everyone here is extremely interested in the club, whether just for, I don't know, entertainment purposes or for themselves. Let's see what happens. All right, we just went through a few ground rules. We've been told there's soccer tennis going on. Obviously, I think the main point of what he was trying to make was the fact that with people coming to watch and being able to record, there's not gonna be anything too technical going on today because they can't be giving away insights for a you know upcoming game, which I guess is understandable. But he did give us a little surprise as to what they're gonna be doing. And it sounds like fun. It's something my dad and I used to do all the time in the garden, the yard. I've realized most people have got chairs. Perhaps I should have brought a chair. Knees are getting old and rusty now, aren't they? I tell you, it's the grass that I think makes such a huge difference. I played on terrible grass in college, but this, it's so, I don't, it's not what I expected actually. It's like a, it feels bristly almost, like turf-like, but it's a very bloody nice surface. Oh, touch, yeah, oh, thank you, oh, touch, yeah, oh. I'm just, they're just waiting for them to call me up because they know I'll be on soon. All right, Oliver, what a seductive position you're in. What's going on? We've got the keepers just having their drills, apparently. This is what I've been told. We've got the main first team doing some very vigorous stretching, and then they're gonna play football tennis, soccer tennis over here. Like being, seeing football being played out here like this, it makes you wanna get out, get out and playing again. Now, I feel like that's something an ex-pro would say. I'm so far from so far from that, I could, maybe you, I'd be comparable to a deceased pro, ex-pro. It's the feeling you get when you come somewhere like this, just the look of the nicely cut grass, how flat it is, how open it is. I mean, this whole complex is quite delicious. Look at this, you've got the new playhouse. I don't know what you would call that. Got one field, two fields, three fields, I assume, and then Back like behind here, there's another like seven or eight fields. That's where the youth team play. I only know that because that's where I went to begin with. <laughs> Here's how, oh, get your leg out of the way, Oliver. Here's how I think this is going. I think this is the, <laughs> this bottom one here closest to us is the losers. <laughs> and up there is the winners. It could equally be the other way around. But if you win, you go up. If you lose, you go down. I think that's, I didn't even need to say that, did I? But I do need to say that I'm flipping baking. I, um, what temperature is it? It's 87. You know, the team are currently, I think second from bottom in the league. And if I'm being hypercritical, I'm not sure this is the best thing to be doing in front of a public audience. I feel like the message it sends is, we're not taking this seriously. But equally, you could look at it as, we're trying to get morale up, we're trying to have some fun, show that the game's all about fun. And once people are having fun, 
they play better. Surprisingly, I'm not the coach. Yeah, so I'm watching other people putting on sunscreen and I've realized I've made a massive mistake because I burn really easily too. Not ideal. Ah, oh, that was an effort to put up. I guess while they're doing the same thing this whole time, I wanted to explain. This morning I worked on some of those pitches to go out to brands that I talked about yesterday. And when I say worked on those pitches, I worked on one. But I got the video shot, I'll edit when I get back. And I thought about explaining why pitching yourself as a content creator is so much better than the typical route that everyone thinks is the right choice, including what I thought was the right choice to find a influencer manager, a talent manager. I think that's possibly, I'd say 90% of the talent managers that you'll find, bad decision to go with. So I was just chatting to my contact and I was saying, I think it would really add to the shareability of the video if I took one of the balls with me. They're also like $180 balls. And then he said, what if you got it all signed? I think that's a brilliant idea. So here we are. Dude, that's sweet. Thank you very much. Yeah, no that was a really good idea, by the yeah. way. Thank you. This ball is super flat, by the way, so there's not much I can do with it. See if we can do this with how flat it is. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about signatures and what, like, who was it? It was John Cena that said he used to detest going anywhere and having people stop him, ask for signature, photos and whatnot until he realized to embrace it, that actually all, it's all just part of his job. Like he couldn't do his job without that part of it. Let me get some signatures. Thanks man, she appreciate it. It's a bit flat, isn't it? Cheers. Thanks. I was like, man, the wind just I know. <laughs> but I just don't say anything. I just let you keep doing it the whole time. <laughs> they invite you back to use the ice bar. So, dude. Uh, would you be able to sign this, please? Thank you. Would you like to pick a color? <laughs> no, it's all good. You got a color? Thanks, man. Purple is a great color. All right, these washable markers are trash. You prefer the laces over the uh, non laces? Yeah, actually, you're more comfortable. I do, I find the same thing. Yeah? Yeah. It's better, huh? Yeah, I exactly agree with you. Tom, man, have a good one. Yeah? It looks sweet, though. Nice to have them custom. Dude, appreciate the signature. Thank you very much. I got told here that this is the US's training ground here. So part of this facility is the sporting facility and the US and Canada use it for the moment as well. They got two fields here and then the station in the middle so they can see everything that's going on. And I'm out of breath because I just hiked up a hill. <laughs> now, when it comes to signatures, getting this ball done, I don't I feel like it's kind of, I know they're here to give out signatures at the end, that's just part of their role. You know, for this event, I feel fine asking for a signature. But if I see someone famous in public, there's not a chance in hell I'm giving them a second look, asking for a signature, asking for a photo. They're not doing their work. I feel like they just leave them alone. I wouldn't touch them. Let's go send off these pictures. Got some other little uh, sausage bits to do today as well. Use the name. Yeah? You should use the name. Uh, odd right. Alright, I searched that up to look at right. the video. Uh, check out the Sporting KC's page. Okay. Because I'm making videos for them. Okay. What's up, guys? What's up? Hi. How'd you enjoy the training? Good. good. It's good fun? I got two yeah. signatures. Dude, nice. Yeah, I my <laughs> look yeah, at I that. Got to clean out and Russell. You guys all did. Hat sign. Keep it. Oh, like eight, nine years now. Okay. Yeah, I've done the corporate gig for a long time, but yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a dream. <laughs> But it's a lot of work, so. Yeah. Did you play soccer? Do you play? Soccer? I, that's how I got over here. Okay. But you know, not at the level that's needed okay. for anything like this. Okay. okay, Oliver, where doth hath you been coming? No, coming from. I think is what I was meant to say. Um, but I did want to talk. What I meant to come over here. I did want to talk about probably the worst decision I've made as a content creator. So. I was going to explain it this way, but I think I have an easier way to explain it, which should be easy to understand. Okay, here we are. Uh, creator on this side, I should probably put a nice little... So you can see the dividing lines, how this is gonna work out. So in any deal, the creator gets, sorry for the 
it's awful, 80% of the deal. The talent manager gets, is that right? Did I put it right around? 20%, I did do it right. The creator is obviously doing a hell of a lot of work and the deal wouldn't be there if the creator didn't have the platform. The talent manager is, is meant to perform a, a very nice role and some do it very well, some don't. So a deal comes in and you have a look at the deliverables of what this is. What? the hell am I saying? So an email comes in and you have to talk about the deliverables. How many videos do you want to do? Do you want to post on TikTok, Instagram and YouTube, etc., etc.? You'd think, no, the creator wants to be able to do it, but it has to come through the talent manager first. But of course it needs the creator. So that becomes something that is now on the creator side of things. No, that's not fair, is it? It should be in the middle at least. Then you have the initial yes or no. Are you happy with the brand, what they're asking for, etc.? And you give your, okay, let's keep talking. This is gonna work. I hope this works. Then you talk about the initial rate. Now a good talent manager would know what your rate is, your upper bound, your lower bound, what's the most amount you'll charge, what's the least amount you'll accept. Mine haven't been like that, so they've come back over to the creative side. A little bit of a trend here. Then you have to look at the concept. So let's say you, you're going ahead and the brand says, all right, well, what do you have in mind? Obviously the talent manager can't be the one doing that, depending on your content type. So for me, that's back on my side. And then you're approving or creating the script. Again, straight up creator side. Then you'll probably still continue with negotiations as things do, and then you'll have to give your approval on that. So you're bringing this all the way down. Like, will you accept this much? Okay, I'm thinking about going back with this much. Does that work? What am I doing? And then you have any script changes. Now that obviously comes through the talent manager from the brand, but it still completely lies on you. That's all of the work there. Now I try not to do any kind of changes. It's like, it is what it is, but obviously I'm open to something reasonable. Contract red lines. Checking through the contract to make sure, because here's the real difference. There, in lots of influencer contracts, you'll find that they'll try and gain, or try and get rights to all of it. So that they completely own it, they can do whatever they want with it, post it wherever, split it up, do whatever. And if they don't have that, there's normally a clause that they'll want to use it forever to be able to post it forever and especially if you're having them run ads on the content you don't want to be doing that so you have to be checking off on these things because those it's not extra work for the talent manager to take those out of the contract the only one it hurts is the creator so it's creator to be vigilant for that caption obviously the i mean talent manager could have an input as to okay it needs this and that that's going on the creator side that is not shared work and then you, the, the creator, have to give final approval, which goes through the talent manager, so I guess we'll kind of give them that one. And then finally, my talent managers, I think they should have been doing this, taking the link and sending it onto the brand, but I was having to do it. So that just goes completely on my side because they should be doing that flat out. So for your 80%, you'd think you'd be getting the majority of these services in that 20% that you're paying. So if you're on a 10 grand contract for one video, you're spending two grand of that for them to do this if you don't have a really good one it's my night tonight so i'd like to do something